What's going on y'all? I got the Toyota in the shop. It's a little bit of a chilly evening right now, but springtime's approaching. So I got some sweet upgrades. It's gonna help us out as summer and the warm weather approaches. Y'all are definitely gonna enjoy this video. Make sure you stick around. just came in the mail super fired up about got ourselves a denso dryer this thing's gonna be awesome picked up a pacific best ac condenser this is a cross throw condenser this is gonna really be a huge upgrade for our ac system i currently don't even have ac so we're fixing to get this thing charged up for the first time i'm super excited about that that's gonna be sweet i also picked up a radiator this is a CSF radiator, 2314. This is pretty much one of the best radiators you can get for these trucks. This is really gonna improve cooling. It's a metal radiator, so it's gonna be a lot more durable. I got a plastic radiator in there right now, and I'll show you guys, it's cracked. It's been leaking since I've had the truck, and so it's finally time to upgrade this thing and really help us out, get us cool during the summertime. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, we're going to start tearing off the grill. We're going to get the radiator out of there and start kind of just disassembling things right now. I got Patrick coming in the morning. He's going to be a huge help with the equipment on getting this thing charged up for us, pulling vacuum, getting it all recharged up because this thing is completely dry right now. Whenever the engine got rebuilt about five years ago, um, it never got reconnected back up so it's just been sitting dry. So it's gonna be really important that we get these new parts in here, get it all charged up, get the oil topped off on it inside the system. And Patrick is much more knowledgeable than me when it comes to this stuff, so he's gonna be doing a lot better job of explaining things and really giving you guys the details on what we got going on. As you can see, this old plastic radiator's just had it. It's been pretty good. I've had a little bit of overheating issues, but only because this thing keeps getting low on fluid you can see it's been spraying fluid all over so it's just going to be nice to really clean this thing up i got a few other things i want to clean up while we're in here so this is going to be a real nice thing to do all right i got the air inlet tube off Make some room to get this radiator out. Pop under here, start draining the radiator. This one doesn't have a drain plugged on it, so we're just gonna pop the hose off, get the sucker draining. Try not to get radiator fluid all over me. Probably going to. Too bad. I mean, for a couple little splash drips, that ain't too bad right there. All right, took the two, three shroud bolts off, pulled it forward, took the two radiator bolts out, should be able to slip it right out now. And I'm not gonna say I'm a pro or anything, but I mean, there ain't no fluid on me. I mean, we got a dry shop for fellas. This is going a little too smoothly. I'm a little nervous for the rest of this project. I mean, shop kitty's over here even having fun. She found herself a box. What do you got there? Yeah, you don't want to mess around with that box. Or well, maybe you do. Next up, I'm over here getting the dryer loose. Be real gentle with these guys. 
You can see I still got the black O-rings on there. So this is definitely probably the original system. I don't know if it's ever been recharged or not, but I mean, it's definitely dry, obviously nothing happened. All right, so I've been slowly disconnecting hoses and lines here. I already got the dryer out. Should be all fully disconnected. There's a top bracket up here. There's another bracket over here, one down here in the middle, and then it pretty much should come out. Don't forget about this guy. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this thing out with my winch in the way. We're fixing to see. I pretty well got it loose right now, but it's a little snug. I'm gonna see what kind of moving and finagling I can do, but it might need to take some more stuff apart here. Well, I really didn't want to, but I had to. I pulled the winch and it's good because this sucker, my ground cable was fully corroded and clearly just took itself apart. And I really don't want to take the rest of this apart, but I'm probably going to have to, which is fine because I need to paint the rest of this stuff. I didn't install this winch or this bumper. And as you can see, this whole thing used to be neon orange. A lot of y'all didn't get to see that, but I've already painted all of this. Not really a fan of neon orange on vehicles, but it gives me an opportunity to clean this up a little bit more. All right. It's a little bit of a wrestle, but definitely manageable. I mean, you gotta deal with what you got. A lot of you guys have winches and aftermarket bumpers and stuff. This is just kind of part of what's gonna happen. Hopefully a lot of you guys are running a stock setup and it'll be much easier for you. All right, so I'm slowly putting some coats on, doing some touch-up paint. Try to hide all that orange, finally. Probably start getting this radiator in, get some condenser in, just kind of get everything mocked up and ready to go. I also got the grill over here. Really, really debating if I want to throw some paint on it and just color match it to match the bumpers. Not really sure. Then it would match the wheels, the bumpers. I'm really leaning towards throwing some fresh paint on it. It's pretty clean on camera, but if you start getting in up close, there's definitely some wear marks and stuff. I think it would just be nice to clean it up. All right, y'all, well, I sent it. It's gonna look way better in the daylight. This paint has so much sparkle in it, so it'll look real clean on there. Over here, I pulled out my ground wire. I got a bunch of extra back there. So I recrimped on a new little fitting. Since that one's completely corroded out, I had to cut back a pretty good little bit because it was still corroded. All right, and here's that pretty radiator. Nice solid metal. Well, I figured while I got it all apart, might as well put some new belts on it. Pretty simple to do. I've had a couple of them for a while. I've just been kind of procrastinating on it. Really should probably do the water pump also while you're here. Very easy task to accomplish. I'm pretty confident mine's like brand new though. So we're just gonna run with it. All right, y'all, she's coming back together. It's looking super, super clean with these new parts. Super fired up about that. You just slip this sucker back in there. They go back in the factory bolt holes. The factory guys have these little brackets. You just take the bolts out of it. This aftermarket one's got the tab already, so it just bolts right in. Got that Denso dryer, bolts right into factory spot. Same thing over here, you can see the other bolt hole. My CSF radiator slipped right in, bolts right up just like factory. It does not come with a radiator cap. I was able to use my old one and I ordered a new one. But just so y'all know, it doesn't come with the cap. All right, y'all, it's the next morning. I've just been buttoning up a few things while I'm waiting for Patrick to get here. He should be here any minute and we'll be getting after charging this thing up. We'll definitely be discussing a lot more things. I know I wasn't super clear on everything that I've been doing. 
I was just trying to wait till Patrick got here and we start charging things up and we'll definitely discuss everything that we've done and why. So right now I'm just finishing buttoning up my winch, getting it back together. Y'all don't really wanna see that. We'll show the different lines that we're gonna be using to reconnect everything. This one just goes back in the factory location. We're gonna use the factory hose over here to come wrap around. I topped off the radiator fluid already, just letting it sit for now, trying to get all the bubbles out of it. Other than that, we're just gonna have to start buttoning it back up and charging this thing. Hey look, Patrick showed up. He is over here trying to get these pesky fittings together. He take a little bit of finagling to get them. He put the new gasket on there. He just got a universal kit. I'll show you the box here in just a second. I'm gonna use the green HNBR O-rings. Yeah. What? Harbor yeah. Freight actually sells a like, universal kit in the automotive section. And you can just have them on the shelf and they'll fit pretty much anything. What you wanna do is you wanna match it up with the original black O-rings. So here's an original one. These work fine for R12 and I've had them still seal with R134A, but it's generally in your best interest to change them unless you want to have a leak. Uh, and then make sure that you also lubricate those with the... Uh, Put a little bit of tag oil on them. Yeah, that'll help seal them up and keep them from tearing up when you're installing them as well. I always want to make sure you back up these lines too or else you'll twist them right off. Yeah, yeah, fun fact too, all the fittings on this, these are all inch size fittings. Toyota used SAE fittings on all their air conditioning lines all the way up until 1994 when they switched to R134A. So there you go, don't try to find a metric wrench to fit onto Actually these fittings. Need SAE wrenches for these. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Yeah, this one's obviously kind of a... This one's a little bit of a pain, that's why I left it loose. Yeah, because there's this... Little tiny crazy bend. Like, yeah, it goes in kind of like that. So... You got this line that comes up out here. It's gonna get the short side. Make sure you put it in the correct direction. Yes, so in, we'll go on the line. That the goes little from, line. It goes from the condenser. Looking not to move. Well, I caught myself being a weirdo, which is normal things. Patrick showed me a cool trick. So taking these bushings for the lower part of the condenser. They're way easier to install beforehand, but you know, I just got here, so through like this so you want to pull a steel sleeve out of the right kind of well you're supposed to go the other way but we'll work backwards too and hold it so you need to make sure when you put the retrofit fittings on the compressor which is down in this uh abyss here you have to pull out the original uh, r12 trigger cores because 90 percent of the retrofit fittings do not depress these valves in so if you thread them on you will wonder why you can't get refrigerant in or out because they don't press the little trigger valve open so you just need to get a regular old tire valve tool and then we'll thread on here and they will pull the trigger valves out because they are not the same but they're incredibly similar to just regular valve cores that are used in tire valve stems so you know, this one kind of sucks because if you look there's a fitting in the back there and it's kind of underneath the uh, intake manifold so this one's the real joy the earlier ones that one's not in as bad of a place to reach but you know because this uh both side fitting of mine comes in from it goes over the top, instead of from the front, so that the valve stick forward, and those aren't as bad to reach, but it's, it's what happens when you have an 88 or 89. Yeah, this setup, you like which, to do it hard. Yeah, you know, all of these oddball uh, late year first gens. So my retro kit, the team with the fittings, also came with the appropriate sticker, so Patrick's filling that out right now. And make sure you put these on the correct side, so the bigger line right here, this is the low side service port, which is the one with the blue cap, which is sitting over there. But that's the low side service valve, and this is the high side service valve, which is the smaller line that goes to the condenser. You don't want them backwards, or else you'll have, you'll have confusion, and you'll be wondering what the hell's happening because your gauges will read backwards. And you kind of can get away with it, but like, it, you just don't. It's not ideal. Yeah. set here. Okay, all these on the line to the just like we just discussed glue goes to the rear unless you have an older one then the valve will be on the front but yeah in this case yes but correct points there are different 
I was starting to pull a vacuum and I had this one off and it's starting to suck in. And then I'll pull the oil in. Hey. And you want to put it in the touch inside so you don't do it with the touches. You put it in about half of the bottle. Uh, we put it all stirred. It's like 3 point, three point six ounces. There's a retrofit bulletin out there, but it's, uh, it lists all the pasties and grams and cc's because it can. But it calls for more or less about four ounces of oil. Uh, you can do a full ounces if you have a fresh compressor with no oil in the system, but this is a retrofit with the original compressor, so we'll just put in about more or less half this bottle. This is an eight ounce bottle of that 46. Alright, well we pulled vacuum for a solid like 20 minutes, so she's clearly not going to leak. Shouldn't leak. Shouldn't. Now that I talked about it, it probably will, so that'll be fun. Start by filling in liquid through the high side. It might even get up to a solid 60 degrees outside where we could mm -hmm. kind of test the AC. Well, boys. Well, we got her out in the sunshine. See if we can build a little bit of heat inside of it and test out the AC. What do y'all think of that grill? I think the paint match grill is a great idea. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about the grill. Think if I should have just left it factory. Think if I should go a different color, black it out. I think I'm real happy with how it looks though. Let me know. All right, y'all, well, Patrick is here. He's gonna give you guys a quick rundown on kind of what we did to my truck and the reasons why, the parts that we went with and exact reasons why we kind of chose what we did. A lot of this is just simplicity and just overall ease of ordering. All the parts work fantastic, and Patrick's gonna kind of explain that stuff for you. Here's the old stuff. This is the stock condenser, which this one's actually still in fairly decent shape, which is kind of rare. This is a serpentine condenser. We have swapped to the newer style parallel flow one, which has a higher fin count and smaller passages, and it is more efficient than these old school serpentine condensers. These will work, but they don't cool that well. And switching to the parallel flow condenser, it's also they're kind of loosely referred to as a micro channel condenser. You can expect a usually like five to 10 degree drop versus using one of these old condensers, even if they're in good shape. They're also readily available online, usually on eBay or Amazon. They're kind of hit or miss with who has them and the pricing, but they're out there. Um, and the other thing too, you always want to change on these systems is you've got the original dryer over here. Desiccant changed inside of the dryer when they switched to R134A happened. This stuff's only compatible with R12 and these kind of do have a shelf life. Like if you ever have an AC line that's open for a long period of time, these go bad. Um, it's also only 10 to 15 bucks, so there's yes. no reason not to replace it. Yeah, so we use a Denso one, and the reason why I want to go with it is here's the box for it, and even a part number. You want to go with the Denso dryer because you can buy other brands of dryers. The fittings are correct on them, and they'll have the side glass and everything. However, the actual outer diameter of the aftermarket dryers is smaller, so they won't actually fit in the bracket on the core support correctly. The Denzel one's correct, so you can tighten the screws down and it'll hold it you know, good and secured. You also want to make sure you add, pick up some PAG 46 oil. This is also, um, it's also referred to as ND Oil 8, but PAG 46 is the uh, non-brand name version of it. You want to add about four ounces into the compressor. Uh, this is kind of loosely following the Toyota retrofit guide for R12 to R134A retrofits. We can link that in the description so you can find it. Because it does a pretty good job covering what all is required. Um, if your system's really screwed up, it's not a bad idea to pull out the evaporator box and either replace the evaporator core uh, or change the expansion valve, make sure all that's in good shape. This one was still in great shape, so I didn't get in there and touch it. And you will want to make sure you swap out all the AC O-rings for the green HMBR O-rings. So you can buy a universal kit from pretty much any parts store. And even Harbor Freight has an actual like 
little organized kit with a bunch of different sizes on them because those are R134A compliant. So yeah, this is kind of the cheap way to do it without doing a complete system replacement. The compressor was still in good shape, hoses weren't leaking, so yeah, new compressor, or new condenser, and new dryer, and it's all good to go. Where would you recommend that they could find um, a new compressor or lines if they needed to? Usually I buy those on Rock Auto. So the discharge hose, you can still buy that from I think Four Seasons makes it. You can get them on Rock Auto. I think I've seen them on eBay and Amazon. The suction line, which is the one that goes to the firewall, that one's kind of harder to find. You can, get, you can still get the one that's intended for the pickups. But the foreigners have a slightly different one. However, Toyota uses standard SEAC fitting, so it is very easy to reproduce one. That's pretty much all the information we got for you guys. Just make sure that when you're putting this all together, try to keep it by Toyota specs. I'll put that all in the description like he was mentioning. There's kind of been a bulletin put out on how to do this process and procedure. As well, just make sure that all your lines and stuff aren't rubbing on stuff. It's very easy to crack or damage them going down the highway with wind blowing through it. We just zip tied a few of them out of the way and try to keep them as sturdy as possible. Well, y'all, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope that really informed y'all on the process. I know I didn't show every little detail. I'll try to put it all down in the description. All the parts and stuff that you're gonna need are gonna be down in the description. And feel free to comment, ask any questions that you need. Me and Patrick will both be in the comment section trying to answer and help anybody out. Make sure they're able to tackle this task on their own. Just went out bike riding, went on a nice little adventure with the whole family, AC blowing cold. So we're doing great. I'm super fired up about this. This is gonna make this truck a thousand times better now. Got a few extra mods that we still got to do on this thing, but I'm looking forward to it. Appreciate y'all for watching. Keep living for Jesus.